Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In the previous video, I showed you how to use parameter modulation using an LFO to modulate the parameter. In this video, I'm going to show you how to link the modulation to another effects parameter. So right down here, we can link it, either from MIDI or from another effects parameter. Let's choose this. And right down here, we can choose what it's linked to. We can go to MIDI, and any MIDI controllers that you have can trigger the modulation. Using controller data right here, using notes, aftertouch, pitch, but we could also use another parameter. So let's choose the frequency on the second band. And let's set it up over here to be a high pass with just the bandwidth to be similar, but lower. And now we move this, the two frequencies are linked. So we can move two at the same time. And adjust the baseline value right here. Go to this one. As it moves, they move together. So when you move one, the other one adjusts with it. And we can tweak it right here. Now a better way to show you this is to use two different effects. So let's start over. Let's delete all this. And let's start over with a new EQ. Change this to low pass. And let's put an LFO back on this. Touch this last, go up here, Choose this, choose LFO, and let's adjust this. Tempo sync, half note, or two quarter notes. Adjust the strength in the bass line. That feels pretty good. Now let's link this to another parameter on a different plugin or effects. Let's go here and add a new effect. Let's add a delay. And let's set the delay to eighth notes. Add some feedback so it repeats. And let's see what it sounds like. Now we can modulate this effect based on the parameter on the EQ, which is modulating itself. So let's touch this, go to parameters, choose parameter modulation, and choose link right here. And we'll link it from the frequency of the low pass filter right here. So you notice right away, it's already moving. To make this easier to see, let's float this. So now these two parameters are moving together. And we could tweak it right down here using the offset and the scale and the baseline as well. So right now, it's fully wet when the frequency is to the right. So when the sound is less filtered or brighter, there's more delay. And when it's more filtered or darker, there's less delay. So let's hear it. Well, we can reverse it by flipping these around.
So now, the more it's filtered, the more delay we hear, which is the opposite from before. So we're hearing more delay as the sound becomes more filtered. So we can link parameters to create multi-layered dynamic effects. And there's no end to this. We can be as creative as we want. Now, if we want to see what's going on without having these plugins open, just select them, if I can grab it here, and choose Showing Track Controls. Then we can see it right over here. See how it's moving? And do the same thing for the wet knob. Select it, showing track controls, and it shows up here as well. So even when these are closed, we can still see what's going on right over here. Pretty cool. Now I should also mention, we can use parameter modulation on our items instead of on our tracks. So let's open this back up. Let's get rid of the delay. And let's move this EQ onto the drum loop by dropping it here. And let's delete it from here. So now the EQ and the parameter modulation are on this item, but not this one. So if we play it, we're going to hear the modulation just in this item. But it turned off right over here. Check it out. The effect is bypassed and the parameter modulation goes away. Because the effect and the modulation are just placed on this item. They're not on the track. So we could do all of this based on items instead of based on tracks. So anyway, that's parameter modulation and linking from the effects parameter in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank you.